tales for dark nights. The following performance is a first round entry in the 2017 Evil Idol voice acting competition. Voting is simple. Following the performance, simply click the thumbs up icon on this video if you'd like them to become a member of the team, or the thumbs down if you'd rather they not. Voting on this entry will conclude one week after the date of its posting. Good luck to all of our contestants. No, my dear, my Uncle Abraham answered me. No, nothing romantic ever happened to me. Unless... But no, that wasn't romance either. I was. To me, I being 18, romance was the world. My Uncle Abraham was old and lame. I followed the gaze of his faded eyes, and my own rested on a miniature that hung at his elbow's chair right hand. A portrait of a woman whose loveliness even the miniature painter's art had been powerless to disguise. A woman with large, lustrous eyes and a perfect oval face. I rose to look at it. I had looked at it a hundred times. Often enough in my baby days I had asked, Who's that, uncle? Always receiving the same answer. A lady who died long ago, my dear. As I looked again at the picture, I asked, Was she like this? Who? Your, your romance. Uncle Abraham looked hard at me. Yes, he said at last, very, very like. I sat down on the floor by him. Won't you tell me about her? There's nothing to tell, he said. I think it was fancy mostly and folly, but it's the realest thing in my long life, my dear. A long pause. I kept silence. Hurry's no man's cattle is a good model, especially with old people. I remember, he said, in the dreamy tone, always promising so well to the ear that a story delighteth. I remember when I was a young man, I was very lonely indeed. I never had a sweetheart. I was always lame, my dear, from quite a boy, and the girls used to laugh at me. He sighed. Presently, he went on. And so I got into the way of mooning off by myself in lonely places, and one of my favorite walks was up through our churchyard, which was set high on a hill in the middle of the marsh country. I liked that because I never met anyone there. It's all over, years ago. I was a silly lad. But I couldn't bear of a summer evening to hear a rustle and a whisper from the other side of the hedge, or maybe a kiss as I went by. Well, I used to go and sit all by myself in the church lard, which was always sweet with time and quite light, on account of it being so high, long after the marshes were dark. I used to watch the bats flitting in the red light and wonder why God didn't make everyone's legs straight and strong and wicked follies like that. But by the time the light was gone, I had always worked it off, so to speak, and go, could go home quietly and say my prayers without any bitterness. Well, one hot night in August, when I'd watched the sunset fade and the crescent moon grow golden, I was just stepping over the low stone wall of the churchyard when I heard a rustle behind me. I turned round, expecting it to be a rabbit or a bird. It was a woman. He looked at the portrait. So did I. Yes, he said. That was her very face. I was a bit scared and said something. I don't know what. And she laughed and said, Did I think she was a ghost? And I answered back. And I stayed talking to her over the churchyard wall till it was quite dark and the glowworms were out in the wet grass all along the way home. Next night I saw her again, and the next and the next, always at twilight time. And if I passed any lovers leaning on the stiles in the marshes, there is nothing to me now. Again my uncle paused. It was very long ago, he said slowly. And I'm an old man, but I know what youth means, and happiness, though I was always lame, and the girls used to laugh at me. I don't know how long it went on. You don't measure time in dreams. But at last, your grandfather said I looked as if I had one foot in the grave, and he would be sending me to stay away with our kin at back and take the waters. I had to go. I could not tell my father why I would rather have died than go. What was her name, uncle? I asked. She never would tell me her name, and why should she? I had names enough in my heart to call her by. Marriage? My dear, even then I knew marriage was not for me. But I met her night after night, always in our churchyard, where the yew trees were and the lichen gravestones. It was there we always met and always parted. The last time 
was the night before I went away. She was very sad and dearer than life itself, and she said, If you come back before the new moon, I shall meet you here just as usual. But if the new moon shines on this grave and you are not here, you will never see me again any more. She laid her hand on the yellow lichen tomb against which we had been leaning. It was an old weather-worn stone and bore on it the inscription, Susanna King's North, 1713. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already, don't forget to cast your vote for this contestant via either a thumbs up or thumbs down vote. New entries will be posted throughout July. Be sure to tune in and vote for each of them and help decide who becomes the next evil idol. In the meantime, turn off the lights and turn on the dark. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights.